Hi, this is Anik Sandrush with Land of the Nerds. We're here at the Arizona Latino Art Center. We're across the street from Phoenix Comic Con. We've been doing the series on indigenous, mestizo, and Mexican-American artists here at the ALAC. Uh, we're doing this in collaboration with Phoenix Comic Con, which is going on all weekend long from June 5 through 8. And the amazing number of artists that are filling up that, the, that dealer booth. Uh, one of the amazing artists that we have managed to get an interview with is the outstanding Aragon Star, who is just multi talented. She's an actor, she's an artist, she's been doing radio plays, one of which, Super Indian, she just turned into a webcomic. Uh, let's see, she is with the Indigenous Narratives Collective. That is correct. Which is a nonprofit group of Native American artists who are putting together a compilation, is the word I want, a compilation book called Tales of the Mighty Co Talker. Okay, so <laughs> Mighty Co -talkers. Yes. which one is INC's Universe Number Zero? I, INC's Universe Number Zero was a project that I helped curate. What I did is I reached out to all the artists that I had contacted through the various Comic Cons and I said, <laughs> Would you like to donate a page? Would you like to do a page about your experience in comics or just something you just want to get off your chest? Mm -hmm. You know, the bugs you in comics about natives. So that's how that came about. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've noticed that you're this variable uh, medium artist, you know, with yes. speaking and drawing and such. So what are the benefits and difficulties of turning a radio play into a comic? Well, okay, benefits are uh, the project continues to live. Okay. Um, the downplay, I mean, if there are any drawbacks to it, okay. you don't get the audio sensation and the music and the woo, you know, the extra, that, that woo factor okay. that comes with radio. Um, I'm really sorry that, you know, the funders didn't come through with some more, you know, production money. Okay. As you know, things like that, it, it happens. But um, I had unused radio scripts from the first run of uh, the episode one through ten and I said what am I going to do with these they're just sitting on a shelf and I always in the back of my mind said I want to do a comic book okay. because I had the skills and it just took did you, know, you do the drawing on. yourself or yes I it? am the artist I'm the artist as well mm -hmm. as the writer and mm -hmm. the the inker and the colorist and the letterer I'm and the whole <laughs> I'm <a terrible. laughs> okay. So is the radio play needed to get a larger understanding of the comic? Or is the comic needed to get a larger understanding of the radio play? Or do they work very well together? I think they work pretty well together because I basically took the world that I created in that uh, uh, radio show, which was, you know, Leaning Oak Reservation, for a fake reservation. And, um, you know, just kind of took those characters, you know, our reservation boy eats tainted commodity cheese and gets superpowers. That's just, that was just the base mm -hmm. of it. And then, Okay, let's let's bring in the villain from Wampum Bags from the radio series. Let's let's see him. Let's see the the big native metallic robot techno skin. Let's see him. So I, I was able to just visualize the stuff that I put in audio, and I thought that was ah, I was like yes. <laughs> so when you drew this, who were your comic muses that you used? Well, I went back to my favorite X Men of the eighties. My, my John Byrne, Chris Claremont, no, you know, I just, I totally went back to that because that's the stuff that I was reading. And of course, another um, influence was like Bill Willingham's Fables. I, I don't know if I I'm a, I apologize, I'm going to have to go back and take a look. I'm a big fan of, because what he did was he took um, Cinderella, or not Cinderella, but Sleeping Beauty and uh, Snow White and put them in a contemporary setting. It's, it's an amazing series, absolutely amazing. You must must look at it at I some point. But anyway, I, I took that and I thought, okay, well, I love the artwork, I love the layout, and that's kind of what I was looking at as well to do this project because I wanted it to look like something that had always been. That's why I wanted to do that old style artwork of, of John Byrne and Neil Adams and that sort of thing because um, I, you know I usually draw like Matt Groening. I always tell people I'm more of I could quickly whip these things out, but I wanted it to look old school. So. So do you have any non-comic muses? Because you said you did the radio play, so I'm yes. sure you wanted to do that in the style of... That was a, done in the style of, you know, the old, like, science fiction serials my mom and dad used to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, The Shadow and all of that stuff that they were like, you know, suspense, drama, and it was all over the top. You know, it was, it was, that was the, the, the whole thing of it. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as, like, non-comic muses, you know, of course, you look to film and television, but also... There are some amazing Native people that A have come before me that A had humor, you know, like Charlie Hill, who was an amazing comedian, just passed last year. 
he was a, we always laughed because he was a native comic who loved comics. And because we would always talk about the Punisher and Superman and Bizarro and everything, we would always have these conversations. But um, he was a muse, and my friend Robert Conley, again, another person that's gone, um, a Western writer of all people. You know, again, we would just bounce. He loved comic books as well. So I said, well, what if? And that was always the big question, what if? So I would, you know, talk to these guys, you know, and say, okay, I'm going to do this. And they were like, yes, it needs to be done. <laughs> okay. Uh, I noticed you're also a musician. So yes. Did you have to put, so did you enjoy putting your own theme music to these comic characters? Oh, heck yeah. I totally stole from the old Batman series because I love that Dick Dale, Link Ray, that, da -da -da, you know. So Super Indian does have that kind of a surf kind of, you know. Oh, nice. B-52s yeah. kind of thing going on. So, but yeah, that, that I, I take from there, you know, all, I, I love my Beatles. I love my Queen. I love my, you know, those bands. And, you know, not that the music is in there, but, you know, when I'm listening, when I'm drawing, it's always the playlist. You know, it's like, okay, all right, I can get through the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a big fan of putting soundtracks to things. Yeah. So when I think, I'm thinking, there should be more John Williams in this, or, it, you know, yes, a little more John Horn. Yeah, Horner. or maybe some Danny Or some French Horn. No, Danny Elfman. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> So you said Tales of the Mighty Code Talkers is not the same thing as INC Universe number zero. Exactly. So two separate projects. Two separate projects. Okay. So yes. Tales of the Mighty Code Talkers is is this a start of a series? It is the start of a series. What we're hoping to have happen is I've written a story about the Choctaw Code Talkers of World War One. Okay. And a lot of people don't know that the Code Talking Project wasn't just the Navajos. I mean, we love our Navajo Code Talkers, Chester Nez, mm -hmm. just love you guys. But it started it was more than just. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was Comanches, it was Choctaws, it was Cherokees, Creeks, Caddos. Uh, I mean, tons of tribes participated in the program. Okay. So I took that story and put it into issue number one. Uh -huh. um, mine was ready first. That was just kind of the the fluke of it. I just like lit a fire under myself and got twelve pages. Boom, got it done. Mm -hmm. So we printed that, and that's going to be part of a larger volume that comes out later this fall. Okay. Cool. Yeah. How many artists are in the IMC? Oh, this is, I love all of our people. You talk to Jonathan Nelson, yes. and hopefully you'll talk to Teddy Zoe. I don't know, or Theo Zoe. We're trying to get We'll it. see if that happens. Um, you know, and then uh, we have Roy Boney, who's Cherokee, lives in mm -hmm. Oklahoma. Michael Shiyashi, who also wrote an amazing encyclopedic volume called Native Americans in Comics, A Critical Study. Pick it up. It's yeah. from McFarland Press. It's Todd? No, uh, no, 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 not Todd. <laughs> Different McFarland. Different McFarland, okay. Yeah, but amazing. But he goes through the stereotypes, the things that we've put up with over the years. And the reason why a lot of us said it's time for us to take We need control. to fix the stereotype. We need to fix it. So that's why, you know, we have him. We have uh, Beth LaPense, who's uh, Ojibwe. She lives in Portland. We have a gal, Christina Badhand. Oh, you Lakota. are cross country. Yes, exactly. We are all over. I mean, absolutely. So, you know, Jonathan's in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Thea's in Vegas. I'm in Los Angeles. So I wasn't sure if it was just a West Coast thing because I only saw, <gasps> I'd only seen Theo and Jonathan and you and yes. somebody else went blanking off. Lee Francis. Yes. Yes. Lee Francis is sort of our executive director of the whole deal. He's based in Austin, um, but he's Laguna Pueblo. Pueblo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that is quite wide. Um, is there anything I'm missing that I, you want to make sure that we're not forgetting? Well, uh, Super Indian Volume 2 will be coming out very shortly. I'm finishing it up now. Um, it's, uh, there, there's two issues that will be in it. You can look at Super Indian online. I a uh, secret to your viewers and yes. listeners that, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go back and look through the back panel. We'd love you to buy the book on Amazon or Comixology. Yes. But... Yeah, let's not pirate. Yeah, let, let's not pirate, but you can go have a look-see. Okay. Yeah. Um, right now, it's the uh, Curse of Blood Quantum. Is it just the sounds name. intimidating. It is a man who's cursed to become a full-blood Indian by be, a, being a vampire. Oh, it's a curse. Oh, it's a curse. No, no, the, 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 he, he wanted to steal some Aztec gold, tried to steal the Aztec. He was cursed by the Aztec shaman to become a vampire in order to become a full-blood Indian by biting other full-blood Indians. Interesting. <laughs> I know, it's pretty okay. whacked out, but you know, that's that's right. I'm coming from humor. You know, our culture is a great way we, to get to people. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 
oh, let's see, you've done that. Wow, just, you're an actor, you're a musician, you're a playwright, you're an artist. What place am I not thinking of that you've done besides, I mean, I know you've done Beyond Super India. There's something else you've done that I'm oh, just not thinking of. I, are, 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 I really feel empty. Are you thinking about Kyle? Have you Kyle, seen Kyle? The Sphinx the, the Cat. The Sphinx Cat, yes, exactly. Um, I had learned in one of the many panels I went to, because I did a lot of Comic Cons before I even put pen to paper, mm -hmm. to see how this process, to, to learn the business okay. of how to put a comic book together. And one of the ladies said very wisely, you know, if you're going to do a web comic, make sure you update it every week okay. because your, your readers will get antsy and restless. And if you get behind, have a buffer comic. Do something that you can draw quickly, easily. And so Kyle is line drawings of a Sphinx cat and his adventures. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Dark, for, oh, for helping us <laughs> cross promote with the ALAC and with Phoenix Comic Con. We uh, are pleased. All of us are pleased. I'm pleased. Your panel is 4.30 to 5.30? Yes. Yes. And I think it's room 1.30. Okay. Yeah, 1.30. Which is in Phoenix Con the Phoenix Convention Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, that is tonight on Friday? It is on Saturday. Saturday. Saturday at 4.30. I thought it was tonight. So oh. I was trying to get some of my interviews done. <laughs> so I have more information. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Please be sure to go to landofnerds.com, our main page, so you're not missing anything, so we can keep you updated. Uh, be sure to use our Instagram, our YouTube, so we're promoting these these videos as well as the ones with Nelson and our other artists. Uh, please come visit the A-Lock to see the amazing artwork. We've got here. to come down here. We've got some comic book art. We've got some comic book stylings from Vaquero Muerto and others. Uh, and please, please keep us on your Twitter. Uh, thank you, Miss Star. And this is Alexandros saying, see you later.